Welcome to another episode of the Speak to Sell Yourself and Your Business show. And today, like every time, we I do bring incredible speakers and you have to give me that, people. Please do say yes, especially if you're watching this on replay, because today I've got the one and only. And before I say anything else, I met her on Clubhouse a while ago. And I like to believe we've developed like a you know strong connection and we have got a few things in common when it comes to speaking, when it comes to impacting people's mindset, being in front of the camera, sharing our greatness. So today I've got the one and only Ify Thomas and I like to call her Ify. Oh, welcome to the Speak to Sell Yourself and Your Business Show. What a pleasure. Look to me, people, just so you know, before Ify speaks, She's like the guru. She's the master. And you can only look at her to know that she is impactful in front of the camera. I can only see her and that's impact. And now just <laughs> wait for her to speak. So over to you, Ify, for a quick intro. And let's just have a chat about to be more impactful, more authentic in front of the, of the camera. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. And you always make me smile. You know, I think when I met you on Clubhouse, one of the things that attracted me to you guys is that that it's always fun. You know, I think often in business or whatever we're doing, we can sometimes take ourselves so seriously that we just don't remember to laugh and remember that this is enjoyable, this is why we do it. And um, I think you definitely bring the fun, you know, back into work and that's wonderful. So thank you for having me here. I'm really excited for the conversation. It is it is a pleasure, Ify. And would you like to tell us, apart from my brief introduction, tell us a bit more about what you do on a daily basis? Oh, thank you so much. So what I do on a daily basis is really um, adapted over the years. You know, I, I started my career as a dancer, so I was performing on stages. You know, I was on X Factor, singing behind Leona Lewis and, uh, you know, Alexandra Burke and on stage with Paul McCartney and all of these incredible people. And my career was actually being seen by people, but not actually speaking, dancing, using, using my body. But as I developed through the dance world, I decided that, you know, singing might be something that I'd like to do. So I created a girl group and I put together this girl group and we would perform on stages and then I went solo and you know so I'm used to being in being seen and I'm usually being seen performing so um this has has been a real different change because when I started my business when I left the world of entertainment and started my business in the world of corporate finance one of the things that I wanted to do is I found myself driving up and down the country meeting these new accountants getting them into the network and my friend said why don't you just send them a video I was like, huh? Send them a video. Don't I, I said, oh, it would be more powerful if I'm there in real life. It's it's much a it's a better thing to show up and shake someone's hand. And that's kind of been my mantra um, for a long time. I really feel like you have the energy. But when we got um, into lockdown, I had pivoted before that again and become a speaker. So I have an agent who books me for speaking events. So I'll speak for people like eBay or Snapchat and universities and mine. So I'm, 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 I love speaking. I love sharing. I love being on stage and everything. I like it to be physical. But then when we got into COVID, into the lockdown, on the first day of lockdown, I thought, you know what? There's going to be people at home who are struggling, whose mental health is going to spiral out of control. And because I'm already an author and I write and talk about mindset and mental health and confidence and self-esteem and I've got a book I've got an online course and this was all before COVID so I've always been using my message to be able to get it to people via books by me speaking at events by my audio book and just by me showing up in, in real life and I thought right if I take everything that I do which I do like outside the house and I bring it inside the house how can I use what I've got to get it out there? And I was like, you know what? I'm going to start a Facebook page. It's going to be called Lockdown Motivation. And every single day while we're in lockdown, you know, they told us it was only going to be like a couple of months, mm. didn't they? Yeah. So I was like, every single day I'll be live on your screens. So day one, I'm like, dun, 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 dun. I was like, lockdown, 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 don't mean we got to shut down. Lockdown, lockdown, mm. don't mean we're about to shut down. And I was like doing this dance. I was like, come on, everyone, let's do it. I see you dancing, I see you dancing. And it was just, and I was like, right, you are the boss of your mind. You might be stuck inside, but that doesn't mean that you're going to lose yourself. This is an opportunity to build yourself. I was doing all this kind of like motivation and it was so much, it was keeping me going to be honest as well. 9 a.m. every day I'd slide in and the video would be me sliding into the living room onto the sofa saying, wake up, put your makeup on, make yourself feel good for you. <laughs> like it was just 
fun. And what happened is I did it every day and I did it for nine weeks. Wow. Every single day for nine weeks at 9 a.m. There was me in a different outfit telling you, and I was reading like the contents from my book. I was like, right, in chapter three, it's all about your self-esteem. And I loved it. And then around weeks was when um, everything happened with the George Floyd and you know everyone became a little bit rattled and there was a lot yeah. of um, there was a lot of pain and I experienced a lot of pain so I actually was like I don't think I can show up for people I just can't pour because right now I'm I'm in pain so I took one day in bed for me to and I was like Do you know what come on Come on, Ify, share, share your pain. So I just spoke, but I wasn't come back like, dip, like I was before. I was like, right, guys, so what do we do when we experience pain? What do we do? And I use video to communicate my message by going live every day. I was like, every single day, and then the videos I would download and then send to WhatsApp groups and stuff like that. So I recognize that video is really powerful. People used to be like, I don't feel comfortable. I don't know how you do it. And it was this one thing that happened. I was shopping in Costco when we were allowed out to go and get food shopping. And this one lady who had a mask on and a hat on, I had no idea who she is. She went, you're iffy. I said, yeah, hi. She was like, you have saved my life in lockdown. You wow. have saved me. And I was like, oh my God. She goes, I watch you every day. You have saved my life. And I thought, oh my gosh, this, what I'm doing is so much more than uh, what I thought it was, was come on guys, like Mrs. Motivator. I was mm. doing it from let's be positive. Let's, but I didn't realize the impact of having somebody speaking into them was having on their sanity in the house because not everyone has an Ify Thomas in their house going, today's going to be a great day. True. You Very know. True. But I had overlooked that. So that made me go, do you know what? Let me take this seriously. Let me actually think about what I'm actually talking about and what I'm sharing. Let me be consciously aware that people are in different places in their life. Let me, I thought the people who were watching me were my regular followers who had already bought my book and who already knew what I was about. Like they're not new to meeting me, but I found out it actually attracted lots of other people sure. that had never even engaged with me, don't know any part of my story. Just see there's this woman who in lockdown seems to be giving some really good positive advice. So they didn't know anything about, and I never ever introduced, I never started the video and go, hi, I'm Ify Thomas. I never even introduced myself because I was just assuming it's my community, but more and more people kept joining. So that was a really important point for me. So then how I use video is that I meet so many brilliant, talented, amazing, incredible people, people who really have so much passion, like everyone has a story. Everyone has something that makes them who they are. And often people can't articulate their story. And I'm really good at words and I'm really good at speaking and I'm good at putting things into sentences so that I can, because I've trained to do this. I didn't, I wasn't born like this. I've trained to be a speaker mm -hmm. and I've trained to pull stories from thin air to, to um, drive home a point. So I understand how to create a story, but what I love is that everyone can create stories for themselves. So my business is Mind Workout, but we've got a side of the business that was created during um, um, just the end of lockdown, more beginning of Clubhouse called Mind Workout Media. And what Mind Workout Media is, is we take entrepreneurs, we take speakers, we take people who've got something to say, and we sit down with them and we, we, I just ask them a series of questions to let them just speak. And, I, and then I hear their timeline and then I take the bits that connect with their overall message and we write actual brand stories, signature stories that people can share. And then my whole team, we support them in their pre presentation and what they look like, and what their background looks like and what they sound like. And then we get them on video. We actually coach people who've never been on video to get on video and share their story. And then we take that story and then we edit it and we put layers of pictures and music and then hand it to them and say, this is what you share now. So you're afraid to get on video, just share this story. This is your story. Just share exactly the way you've done it with us, how we've changed it. So it's a bit like, you know, wedding, you know, weddings. Hmm. People say, I'm going to learn a wedding dance. They've never danced in their life. They don't go and have a dance class, a ballet class or a performance class. They just get one person who comes and teaches them a series of steps so that once they've done the steps, it looks good. They haven't spent time working on their plies. They haven't spent time stretching them. There are, they haven't spent time learning the ba basics, the fundamentals of dance. Sure. They've just learned, how do I do this wedding dance so it looks good on this night? Well, that's how we look at a brand story. I don't spend ages teaching them 
the fundamentals of speaking. I don't teach them the psychology or the theory. I basically just say, this is your story. Now let's practice it. Now let's perform it. Now let's show it up with the world, which means it's, um, it might seem surface level, but the point is it's their story. If they want to become speakers, then they'd have to learn how to do that. Like you, you're a speaker. You've mm -hmm. learned how to do it multiple times over and over again, but not everyone wants to say True. those stories. It's, they just need one story. So um, that's what I do. I help people get their message out there on video. And then the other part is I'm a mindset and confidence coach. So I actually take people, I help people create the, get clarity. I actually, people say I'm a life choreographer because I help people choreograph <laughs> their life. Because um, I used to be a dancer and I followed dance choreography really well. And I really wanted to help people choreograph their life so they can create the step. They can create the overall end routine. Like, what does it look like? What's the blockbuster? What's the what's the end of the movie? You know, what's the stage show? What does it look like? Okay, so you want a blockbuster hit or you want to sell out theatre show? Okay, so what do we have to do to get you to get, what's the gap between where you are now yeah. to where you want to show up? And that's what I do and I love it. I absolutely love it. So that's a very long answer to your wonderful <laughs> question. <laughs> Goodness me. Well, thank you so much, Ify. And people, I think if it is a living example of how to be engaging, captivating, powerful, and much more confident in front of the camera. And I will invite you, and I have a few more questions, of course, several questions. Let's see how we're doing with time anyway, Ify, because what I want people to do is actually watch from the beginning to the end of Ify's answer and look at her physiology, look at her level of energy, her motivation, the story she's crafting, how excited she is in a way about what she does. So what if you could be excited about what you do? And there is a natural element to ourselves as human beings that are going, is going to enable us to be, be in front of a camera, in front of an audience, in front of anyone and give it our best. And of course, as if you share, there are going to be some skills that you may need to develop and everything else. But the essence, we all have that ex essence if we connect with it. So I'm loving this, If it, Look, people watching this, they've seen how powerful you are. She is a powerhouse. So <laughs> round of applause, quick round of applause for if you right now. Woohoo! So what would you say to people? Again, I'm not too comfortable in front of the camera and I don't know what to do. What would be your top tips when it comes to being in front of the camera and delivering something that's engaging? What would you say to them? Well, first of all, thank you so much. And great question. My top tips would be before you go on camera, ask yourself, why do I want to be on camera? Because if there's no real pull or desire to go on video and you don't have any real message to share, then you won't go on camera. So I think it's about asking yourself, if I don't go on camera, what does that mean for people who could potentially see me? You know, I often say to the people, especially the people that I work with, they're all going on, they want to go on video because they want to share their story because their story is going to inspire, educate, motivate, impact someone's life. So I say, well, if you don't go on video, how are they going to hear about you? So why are you trying to go on video? I want to go on video because I want to share, I want to tell somebody that they don't have to give up when people tell them that they can't do something. Okay, well, that's a big why. So where in your life did people tell you that you couldn't do anything? Oh, well, there was a time when I was trying to do something and everyone around me kept telling me I couldn't do it. And I remember feeling like I might just not bother doing it. And it made me feel so sad, but then, someone believed in me and then I did it. And that, and now my life has completely changed and I'm the president of the United States or whatever. You know, I, I, I'm i now a boss lady or a boss man. And um, I wanna tell my story because I wanna make sure that nobody else feels like they can't do something because somebody's told them that they can't. Okay, well, that's compelling enough to get on video. So first of all, that's a big enough pull. So now you know why you're going on video and you know what you stand for. Now we just have to ask ourselves, the next thing is, is am I willing to be exposed? Because that's the second question. Because if you want people to listen to you, then you, they have to be able to see you. And if they see you, that means that you have to pull back some of the layers of who you are. So if you're somebody, when you say something, you go, you have to be able to do that on video. You don't stop yourself. You know, a lot of people try to suppress their own facial expressions. But if you think someone like Jim Carrey, he literally has made his whole career by pulling the most the amazing 
random faces and we just love him for it because he's expressing himself i think the most important thing is first of all know why you want to go on video and then be willing to be exposed and then i think the last thing is is to know who you're talking to so why you want to go on it be willing to be exposed and know who you're talking to because when you know who you're talking to then the focus is all about you serving them going on video isn't self-serving if you're going on video because you want everyone to look at me because i'm amazing and i've got so much to say and i'm so fabulous then probably you don't need to be on video go on video because you're like the only way i can get out what I need to say, which I know is going to help somebody, is by me showing up on video looking fabulous. So it's a, a bit of a different reframing it. I don't go on video because I want everyone to see how fabulous I am. I go on video because I want people who need to hear what I have to say, have someone to connect with, and so that they can become everything that they're capable of. Now, if I'm going on video, obviously I'm going to want to look fabulous. I'm not going to show up looking not fabulous, but the main point is not to because of aesthetically, it's about connecting with the people that are waiting and one line i always say is people are waiting for you the world is waiting for you to show up there are people waiting scrolling through their phone hoping that you will come in their newsfeed or and and be somebody that they go ah that's what i need because not everyone connects with everybody everybody has their own connection and people people who like me probably would never scroll past and have anything to do with you. Yeah. People who need what you say would not be interested in what I say. But if we only leave, if we just let other everyone else speak, then there is there, there definitely is space for each one of you. There's space for everyone to show up because there'll always be someone who needs to hear what you say, the way you say it from you. So I, I recommend that you figure out why you're doing it. And then when you know, connect to that power, connect to like a charger. When you plug a phone in, you go boom, connect to the power of why you're showing up. And that should take away much of the self, the, you know, the, the fear of looking silly and the self doubt and the lack of confidence because you're like, it's not even about me. It's about the people I'm helping. Make it not about you, make it about them. Well, what else can I say, Ify? So that purpose, that why you're doing it, being willing to expose yourself, I think those three tips are amazing. Gold dust indeed. And then the last one, yes, people, you know, yeah, who are you connecting with? Who is it that you're speaking to? Because they're waiting for that message. And I don't know, people, if you notice, you know, this is powerful because Ify, very kinesthetically as well. I love it because you're speaking about it and you're speaking about connection and you are connecting. I mean, it's just a boom and boom and that power in you that nothing is stopping you. So, and I'm, I don't think we tend to do those things on purpose. It just happens because we are very much connected with our reality, our truth, our why, you know, we're exposing ourselves out as we are because we believe in what we do. And that comes across. And I love that. We're never going to be liked by everyone. It doesn't matter about the people that hear our message and connect with us. Then we are impacting their lives just like you did. Well, just like you do. And especially based on your story, how you did during lockdown. And that's beautiful. Ify. Thank you so much. I've got one more question and then we can begin to wrap up because I know you've got things to do as well. What would you say? Well, what would you say? You said loads. People watch this over and over again. And of course, then you're going to have the opportunity to get in touch with the one and only Ify Thomas, as I like to call her, Ify O. So um, I'm, I'm doing my videos, yeah? And, you know, I'm, I'm happy-ish with them in how I look and everything else. And I know it's about, you know, the, the message and the people and all of that, but I'm also creating an impression in how I show up. So what would be, again, your tips when it comes to showing up in terms of how you dress, the lighting, the environment, and much more? Because people are seeing that and unconsciously, they are creating an impression of you right now mm. on the spot. So over to you, Ify. Boom. Oh, Boom. Thank Connect. So, thank you so much. I love that. And yeah, this is a question that comes up quite a lot because people say, well, I don't have a lovely background. I don't have a lovely backdrop. Well, I think it's not really about what you don't have. It's about what do you have? Where in your home is there a space where you can create your own little set? And it's actually quite fun. So I'd say like, if you look at my set right now, this set has been, um, this is my regular set that's been created for these kind of Zoom calls. So I've got the flowers in the background. 
I've got my confidence star further back. Um, I'm not sure why that's there. I actually would move those flowers, but any, the ones right at the back, but anyway. But I knew that I was gonna be sitting and probably blocking them. And then here, you can see my books. Now you can't really see what they are, but you could probably zoom in on the video and find out. These are, these are a combination of my, some of the books that I'm working through or that I lean, that I lean to. You know, and all around you can see dotted of books because what I talk about is about the knowledge that I know and the knowledge that I've learned has come from books and come from experiences. And I'm, I, I love books. I basically have read more than 350 books. Probably, I, I've been saying I've read more than 350 books for the last 15 years. And in that time, I've read loads more books. So I haven't actually, I stopped counting, but I counted up until then because I wanted to have the impact in saying I've read this many books. But now I've probably read way more. And the, the point of it is I, I'm telling you that because I believe that knowledge is um, powerful, but only if you use it. And I'm somebody that likes to implement it. So to answer the question, I'd say, first of all, have a look to see what people you like. I would say just do a little bit of audit and say what, what people, when I see them on video, do I think, oh, that's nice, or oh yeah, that's me. If you already have your own personal style, then I'd definitely bring it to the video. I wouldn't try to be somebody that you're not. So if you're, whatever you're wearing on video, ask yourself, would I wear this out? And if you wouldn't, then take it off. It has to be something that you would actually wear out because otherwise you're just, you're, you're creating a, a fictitious character. And when we talk about back to what we must do when we're showing up is you have to expose yourself. People who are pretending to be somebody else feel very uncomfortable exposing themselves, which is why mm -hmm. they don't show up. So you've got to show up as you, who you actually are and how you want the world to see you and how you intend to show up in the world. Because if, you if you're somebody who says, I never, ever wear a nice top. I always wear a hoodie. I'm a hoodie girl. Then wear a hoodie on your video. Like show up with your hoodie. You're like, no, I always have to have my makeup immaculate. Well then put all your makeup on and make it look fabulous. Do the thing that is you. So that's in terms of your attire, but also you have to think about yourself. I'm going to be presenting myself to this type of audience. And I want this audience to be able to connect with me. What kind of thing would resonate with them mm. in what I'm wearing? So if I'm going to, if let's say my audience, and I'll give you an example. Let's say my audience in particular is men who are accountants who are 50. So I'm not gonna turn up in a Black Lives Matter hoodie on video. And why would I do that? It would, it's just going to, it's going to create turbulence. They'd be like, oh, what, what, what? Like, Absolutely. the fact that it says Black Lives Matter um, and, I'm, and I'm, my ideal customer is a, an accountant, if I personally wouldn't do that. Not because I don't believe in the statement, but because it's inappropriate for that call. Just like if I'm going to go and speak, which I've spoken at um, a, a male dominated technical finance company, I'm not going to walk in with like, girls rule. <laughs> like, girls are cool. Like, yeah, yeah, check this out. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to ask myself, you know, my goal is to get people to connect with my message and what I'm about. And I'm not going to put a barrier up in the clothes that I'm wearing before I've even got my message out. You know, if I'm going to do a, if I'm going to an event and it's all about um, clean water and being able to give people clean water, then I might go wearing a um, give back t-shirt, you know, because that is positioning what I'm saying and it makes sense to what I'm saying. The worst thing that you can do um, whenever you present yourself on video is make people just confused by what you're doing. You know, it's about making it, don't make it difficult for the listener to follow the story because you're, yeah. they're like, I don't understand. She's talking about, she's talking about empowering children, but she's standing on a construction site in work boots with a cigarette in her mouth. Well, how's, how's that relevant? Hmm. You know? So it's about Absolutely. choosing, you know, maybe I could be with a power drill going, we're going to power children. Maybe that's kind of like, we're going to do it the hard way. It depends. But it's always, always think about your brand. Always think about your brand position. Always think about, is what people are seeing distracting them from what I'm saying? Because what you're saying is the powerful thing. What they're seeing could distract them. So even like now with this top that I'm wearing, I actually keep pulling it up because I feel like it's a little bit too low and it could be distracting for the viewers, you know, to have a full on cleavage out. So that's why I'm like, oh, actually, I'm gonna keep, this top is, I 
I'm going to pull it up because it's not relevant um, to how I look. But I think about what I'm wearing. If I'm going to be going on a conference call and I'm going to be presenting myself on video and it's the first time they've met me, you know, and I know they're only going to see the waist up, then I want them to see me in the, the as a professional, as somebody who's organized, somebody who cares about like the way I show up. And I'm going to decide on that. But if they say, look, we're going to jump on a call with us. We're going to have like a strategy call around what you're going to say that during this talk. We're going to look at the brief and we're going to just like get a coffee and just have a chat. Then I might turn up in my hoodie. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? It's about yeah. recognizing where the time and place is. And um, so, yeah. And it's also very exciting as well, because you can say you can reinvent yourself. You can say from now on, I've got one client. And we were like, right, what we see you in is high shoulder pad really lovely bright suit jackets. That's your look, right? So, okay, so now whenever she shows up, there's a bright high-waisted shoulder, shoulder pad suit jacket. Uh, that's it. And she has like a, a turban on thing on her head that matches. And that, now, now when you think of her, you, when you see her, you think of her because you know what she stands for. It's like a uniform. Simon mm -hmm. Cowell, white shirt, jeans. Yeah. Every time. If we saw it, when we see him in a, when we see him in white t-shirt jeans, but we started seeing him in white shirts, it's like, oh. That's not your brand, um, but he's switching it up, you know? Imagine if you saw him in a polar neck, you'd be like, in a turtleneck, you'd be like, oh my gosh, what happened to Simon Cowell? You know? So I think it's about being really clear about who you are and what you want to show up like. So, and everyone gets to decide what works for them. Super valuable piece of information and that congruency as well, when you show up and the message and how clear it's important that you make your message because otherwise you're distracting the audience. So incredible value here, Ify. Thank you so much. Look, we're reaching a point when we could actually start wrapping up. So what would be your final thoughts before we go and share how people can get in touch with you? Um, my final thoughts would be, um, if you're really serious about getting on video and you know what your why is, then just ask yourself, who am I... Who am I not helping by being afraid to get on video? Ask yourself, by me not getting on video, who, who is not being served? And then you should hopefully get on video with that, knowing that you're not serving, you're not serving people. And maybe say to yourself as well, one last thing is that um, the world's waiting for me. Somewhere, some, somewhere, there is someone waiting for you. I, I love everything you shared today. As you know, I'm a big fan of yours also, Ify, Ify O. But then that one is powerful. I mean, you know, people are waiting for you out there. There might be someone waiting for you today and you could change that person's life. So Ify, thank you so, so much. Give Ify a round of applause, everybody. Woo! Amazing, Ify. How can people watch in this? And I really hope they watch it like 10 times at least and they apply the knowledge because as Ify said, I, you know, we don't really care how much you know. We really care about what you do with what you know. So Ify, how do people get in touch with you? Oh, thank you so much, Hazeo. Um, <laughs> I love it, thank you. They can find me um, either on Instagram and Ify Thomas, but you can find me on my website, which is ifythomas.com or mindworkout.com. If you just Google Ify Thomas, I-F-E Thomas, then I'll show up on one of the social media sites where you hang out. So just um, message me and then we'll just start connecting. Amazing, Ify. Kisses to you. Thank you very much. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us and people. What else can I say? Get in touch with this incredible woman. She is a powerhouse. All my love to you and your family, Ify. And I'll see you very soon. What a pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much. Thank you.